Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the first session on circles of class 10 mathematics. In this session, let's have an introduction which we have already learnt and we'll learn a few more contents. We're going to learn. Before that, let's understand a circle. As we have already learnt the definition of circle, I'm just giving you an information what we have learnt in our earlier classes. Circle. A circle is a collection of all points in a plane which are at a constant distance from a fixed point. So here we have a circle and when we say the constant distance and the fixed point, we know what they meant by. The fixed point is nothing but the center, whereas the constant distance is a radius. Oh, what are the terms that we know in a circle? We have learned so many terms uh, in a circle in our earlier classes. Let's see one by one here. Radius. Center, chord, segment, sector and arc. These are the terms that we know about a circle in our earlier classes. Radius and center we have already learned enough about it. Chord, I hope you must be knowing. The chord, segment, sector and arc. When you talk about segment, we have two things. One is major segment and minor segment. Similarly, uh, sectors will also have major sector and minor sector. Arc will also have the major arc and the minor arc. All these terms were well discussed in our 9th standard. So I'm just going to uh, see what are we going to have in class or in this chapter. What are we going to learn about circles other than what we know in this chapter? Let's see. We are going to learn about a tangent to a circle and number of tangents from a point on a circle. So we need to understand tangent and uh, we need to find out how many tangents are possible in a circle. And if you tangent to a circle, let us consider a circle and a line PQ. So here is a circle and here is a line PQ. Now when we have a circle and PQ, when we try to combine these two, there are a what are they? So we have three possibilities here. One is the circle will be lying as such and the line PQ will be lying as such. That is the line PQ will be lying outside the circle. Now when we see these two, we don't see any intersection of these two uh, figures here. That is we don't have any intersection point between the circle and the line PQ. The line can touch the circle at two points. You can see that here. You have the point A and the point B. So there are two intersections of this line on this circle. The possibility is there can be only one intersection of this line on the circle. So the circle and the line can be intersecting at one point. That is they can meet exactly at one point. So when you have a circle and a line, you have only three possibilities. Either they don't have any intersection or they have two intersections or they have only one intersection. So these are the things that we can have when you have a circle and a line PQ. So what is a tangent to a circle? A tangent to a circle is a line that intersects a circle at only one point. So the possibilities what we have seen in the first two cases are not the tangent, whereas the third possibility gives us a tangent that is it's a line the line that touches a circle at exactly only one point is called a now how many tangents can be drawn on a circle we know we have taken only one line pq and we have seen uh, that that line if it intersects the circle at only one point that becomes a tangent if it is so if i have multiple number of lines uh, will all they be tangent to a circle Let's see. So for which let's have a diagram. Here we have a circle and a line AB. Now this line is intersecting the circle at two points which are Q1 and Q2. So these are the two points on which the circle and line intersecting. 
Now what if, if I just tilt this line AB, let me, let me just move this line AB. Of course, you know that the line is uh, having two intersections and this line can be called as a secant. If a line intersects a circle at only one point, that is a tangent. And if a line intersects the circle at two points, that can be called as a secant. So what is the difference between a chord and a secant? There is a minute difference here. A chord is nothing but a line segment, whereas secant is a line. So you can understand here, the line is extending outside the circle also. So this is a line and uh, it is intersecting at two points on a circle and hence it is called as a secant. Now what if, if we move this line somewhere on the circle, like this. If we move the circle, again you can see an intersection. You have two intersections, but these intersections are not same as the previous intersections. That is why I have marked the intersections in the first case as Q1 and Q2, whereas in the second case as Q3 and Q4. Now here is the another position of the line on the circle. Now here you can see this line is intersecting the circle at only one point. So we had a line when we have moving around, moving the line uh, around the circle or along the circle, we can see uh, there is a place at which it has only one intersection. Now what if, if we take uh, many lines uh, intersecting a circle at more than one or two points and if we move the position of those lines, any number of lines and if you move across the circle, there will be a place where they will have only one intersection. So this diagram tells you all this. You can see the line AB, which tells you here, um, here is the line AB. You can see here the line AB and uh, you can see another line A dash, B dash. It doesn't mean that it is a line A dash, B dash. So you are moving the line AB towards this position. Similarly, it is again moved to A2 dash and B2 dash. Now, wherever you see, there is a place at which these lines are having only one intersection. But not every line, only one place you can have only one intersection. All the other lines will have at least two points. Of course, it, it can have only two points of intersection. But all these lines will not give you only one point of intersection. There will be only one line which can give you only one point of intersection. So this tells us that there can be only one tangent to a circle. We observe that there is only one tangent at a point of the circle from the above diagram. So this is easily seen that there can be only one tangent from a circle at a point. You cannot have multiple tangents from a, to a circle at the same point. The tangent to a circle is a special case of the secant when the two ends of its corresponding chord coincide. You could have understand this. If at all you see the points Q2 and um, other points here, when they coincide, that gives you the point P. So this Q2 and other points are nothing but uh, the points of chord. Actually, it is a, it's a secant. The line is a secant. And when it intersects the circle, the inter from the place of intersection, it becomes a chord. And this chord, when you move around, it is intersecting to give you a point. That is why we call the tangent as a special case of a secant where the two points, two end points of the corresponding chord coincide. So when they coincide, they'll meet at one point and that point is called your point of uh, contact of us. So the common point of the tangent and the circle is called the point of contact. So here in this diagram, P is the point of contact. So we have learned a new thing called tangent and point of contact of tangent in this session now. Let's see what more we have here. Here we have theorem 10.1. So we are going to learn about the theorem which is going to tell you or give you a better explanation, a better understanding about circles and its tangent. The tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. The tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. Now, this is the theorem that we have. So, let us try to understand what does the statement, what does the statement of the theorem mean to us. 
the tangent at any point of a circle for which we must have a circle and we need to have a point from where we need to have a tangent. So if at all we have such a tangent, that tangent is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. So let's see how the diagram of this theorem is going to be. So we have a circle, we have the center O and you can see the line XY. There is a point P, this is called the point of contact. So the tangent at any point of a circle. So the any point of a circle is nothing but P here. Tangent at P is nothing but XY here. And this tangent is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. That is, you have a center O. From O, if you drop a, if you drop a line to P, uh, that line has to be a perpendicular line to the line XY. So this is what we are going to understand here. Actually, we are going to prove that the tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular. That means we have to prove here OP, the line OP is perpendicular to the line XY. So this is what we are going to prove. Now let's see how are we going to prove this. We'll be starting with writing given to prove and proof and if you have any construction. So here also we are going to list out what are we going to have that is what are given to us. As we know we have a circle with the center O and we have a radius. So O is the center of the circle and OP is its radius. What else we have? There is a tangent through the point of contact. So XY is a tangent through the point of contact P or through the point P on a circle or I can put it as XY is a tangent through P. Now to prove what are we going to prove as we have already seen OP is perpendicular to XY. OP is a radius XY is a tangent. So we have to prove these two are perpendicular to each other. How are we going to prove? So here is the proof. Take a point on XY other than P say Q and join OQ. So we have a circle, we have the tangent, we have a point P on the circle and also on the tangent. Now we have to take another point on the line XY and join this point with the center. Here is the diagram. We have the circle, we have a line XY and there is a point, you can see the point on the line XY and we have joined OQ. Now, look at this line OQ and uh, the line OP. The point P is a point on the circle, whereas look at the point Q, it is not a point on the circle, whereas it's a point outside the circle. So when we consider the distance of these points from the center, so there we are going to consider, we are going to uh, continue our argument by this actually. It is consider the point on a circle and consider a point outside the circle and find their distances from the center. So here like this, as we know the point Q is outside the circle, we always know OQ is greater than OP, that is distance of OQ is always greater than distance of OP because P is a point on the circle and the Q is a point outside the circle. When you drop a line and try to find the distance, it is going to be obviously greater than our OP. Now, to have further understanding, let us consider another point R on the line XY and then join this OR as we did for OQ. Here it is. You can see the point R. I have represented the point R on the left side of the circle. It doesn't mean that R should be left side and Q should be in right side. It can be anywhere. It is a, just a point on the line XY. It can be marked anywhere on the line. To have a clarity on the picture, I have marked one on other sides. Now, the same argument, I'm going to have it here also. The point Q is also outside the circle. Similarly, the point R is also outside the circle. And hence, we know OR is going to be greater than OQ. So, if you take any points on the line XY above from P, that is, uh, you have a point P, which is a point on the circle and also on the tangent. So, if you're going to take any other point on this line XY, each and every point is going to be a point outside the circle. So all these points are going to be uh, having a longer distance from the center than the distance from the point P. 
This is true for every point on the line x, y except p. So if you take any point on the line x, y, this uh, those distances are going to be greater than O p. So what do you mean by that? P is the shortest line of all the lines or O p is the shortest distance of all the distances. This means P is the shortest line that is O p is the shortest line. Actually, uh, it is not P just it is going to be O p is the shortest line of all the lines and hence what are we going to have here when we say um, op is the shortest line of everything how are we going to now we have op perpendicular to oy because we say that op is the shortest line of all the lines when you say a line which is shortest among all the lines, that is going to be perpendicular. I mean that line will be perpendicular to the other line. So we have learned all this in our uh, even in uh, sixth standard by uh, uh, practical geometry and also in our ninth standard by various theorems. I hope I did not give much explanation about this. We see that the point line OP is the shortest line of all the other lines which are drawn from O. This means that from O to the points on the lines x, y. So this means that OP is the shortest distance and hence that has to be perpendicular to the line x, y. So OP is perpendicular to x, y which is what we have to prove. So we have proved that if a tangent is drawn from a point on the circle, it is going to be perpendicular to the radius which is drawn from the same point on the circle. So we'll, with this understanding, let's uh, move on to the next thing. start with our exercise 10.1 because uh, with this basic understandings we are going to uh, do try a few problems from exercise 10.1 actually what you have is all uh, one mark questions like uh, Phillips and, uh, and easy answerable questions so you're going to try all those questions and I'm going to try only one problem for you here which is nothing but the third problem of the exercise is just for you to under show what we have a tangent PQ at a point P of a circle of radius 5 cm meets a line to the center O at a point Q so that OQ equal to 12 cm. So length PQ is, we have four options here. One is A equal to 12 cm, B equal to 13 cm, C equal to 8.5 cm, whereas D is equal to square root of 119, that is square root of 119 cm. So we have these four options and we need to find out which is the right one. You can refer your textbook. You have this question in your textbook as a third question. Uh, the remaining I think you can try it out. So let's see how are we going to answer this. For which we need to have a diagram first. We have a tangent PQ at a point P of a circle. So let's have a circle first. Here is a circle. Here is a point on the circle. From this point, we are drawing a tangent which has another point Q. So we have the tangent PQ from the point P of a circle. The circle radius is 5 cm actually. So let me have a center of the circle which is marked as O. Now this tangent meets a line through the center O. This tangent meets a line through the center O at a point Q. That is you have a line OQ so that OQ is equal to 12 cm and we have the radius of the circle as 5 cm so we have we can have it like OP is equal to 5 cm. So here we have the diagram for the circle for the given problem. Now what are we supposed to find out here? We need to find out the length of PQ. Now what do you want? Uh, what are you able to understand from this diagram? Uh, leave out the circle and everything else. Do you see a right triangle OPQ here? Okay, how do we say it is going to be a right triangle? Just now we have learned a theorem saying that if you have a circle and if you have a tangent from a point on the circle and if you have um, radius drawn from the center to that particular point, that radius is going to be perpendicular to the tangent. So having that in our mind, we can say that the line OP is going to be perpendicular to the line PQ. So we have OP perpendicular to PQ. 
So look at the triangle OPQ. This is a right triangle where you have two uh, lengths of two sides. That is one leg OP is known to you and the hypotenuse OQ is also known to you. Uh, there is only one thing which need to be left out that is PQ. I hope you can know what are we going to apply here. We have to apply Pythagoras theorem to get the measure of PQ. And since this is a known concept for you, I am not going to work out here. You can start working out. You need not write any given to prove or anything here. You can directly write OP equal to 5 cm, OQ equal to 12 cm. Triangle OPQ is a right triangle. So, directly write down the Pythagoras theorem by Pythagoras theorem so and so and you can substitute the values and get the measure of PQ and check with your options. So I'm not going to do it here. It is again for your working. So here you have homework for the day. The homework for the day is nothing but uh, writing down all the notes what we have done now along with exercise 10.1 problems. You can just uh, refer your textbook. It is not that difficult. If you have any difficulty, just uh, post us. We will be helping you to solve these problems in our next video.